Welcome, dear viewers, to our exciting journey into the world of programming. Today, we present to you a video that will help you understand and learn how to create a calculator application using the C-sharp programming language and WinUI. We will dissect every line of code and explain how to build a user interface, handle events, and perform mathematical operations, turning your calculator into a full-fledged tool for solving a variety of tasks. We hope that this video will not only be an interesting lesson but also serve as motivation for you to further explore programming and embark on creating your own projects. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments. Let's break down the code step by step. This line begins the definition of a grid element. A grid is a layout container that organizes its child elements into rows and columns. Here, we define the row structure of the outer grid with two rows. The row definition elements determine the height of each row. The first row definition has a height of auto, which means it will adjust its height based on the content it contains. The second row definition has a height of asterisk, which means it will take up any available space not used by other rows with auto height. This line creates a text box element named result text box and places it in the first row, grid. Row equals zero of the outer grid. Horizontal alignment and vertical alignment set the alignment of the text box within its cell. Margin defines the space around the text box. Font size specifies the font size of the text. Is read only is set to true, making the text box read only. Text alignment aligns the text to the right. Text initializes the text box with zero. This line starts the definition of an inner grid, which will be placed in the second row, grid, row equals one of the outer grid. Margin sets the margin around the inner grid. Background sets the background color of the inner grid to light gray. Inside the inner grid, we define the column structure with four columns, each having a width of auto. This means the columns will adjust their width based on the content they contain. Similarly, we define the row structure of the inner grid with five rows, each having a height of auto. The following lines define a series of button elements within the inner grid, specifying their content, appearance, and event handlers for click events. Each button is positioned in a specific row and column using grid, column and grid, row attributes. The attributes for each button include content, the text displayed on the button, font weight, boldness of the text, font size, width, height, and click, the event handler associated with the button's click event. The code continues with definitions for arithmetic operator buttons, special function buttons like percent and square root, and finally, the equals button. The provided XAML code defines the layout and appearance of a calculator interface with rows and columns of buttons for numeric input, arithmetic operations, and special functions. Let's go through each line of the provided C-sharp code in detail. These lines declare variables current input, current operator, and result, which are used to track the calculator's state and results. Current input stores the user's current input, digits, current operator stores the current operator, plus, dash, asterisk or slash, selected by the user, and result stores the calculation result. This is the constructor of the main window class, which initializes the window and sets its properties, including the title, size, and presentation options such as always on top and non-resizability. This code is a fragment of C-sharp code used to configure and control a Windows application window. Let's break down this code step by step. Here, the title of the current window is set to calculator. This changes the text displayed in the window's title bar. This code obtains the window handle, HWND, for the current window using the WinRT API. HWND is a unique identifier for a window in the Windows operating system. Here, a window ID object is created, which is used to identify the window at the operating system level. The getWindowID from window method is called with the window handle HWND as a parameter. This code retrieves an app window object, representing the application window associated with the specified window ID. 
Here, the size of the application window is changed to 316 pixels in width and 600 pixels in height. This sets the new dimensions of the window. This code obtains an overlap presenter object from the app window. Overlap presenter provides access to parameters and settings for displaying the window's content. Is always on top equals true, the flag is set to indicate that the window should always stay on top of other windows. This means that the window will be visible even above other active windows. Is maximizable equals false, disables window maximization by the user. This means that the user won't be able to maximize the window to full screen. Is minimizable equals false, disables window minimization by the user. This means that the user won't be able to minimize the window to the taskbar. Is resizable equals false, disables window resizing by the user. This means that the user won't be able to change the window's size by dragging its borders. In summary, this code configures the application window with the title, calculator, keeps it always on top, prevents the user from resizing, maximizing, or minimizing it. This method handles clicks on buttons with digits. It gets the value of the click button, appends it to the current input, and updates the text box, result text box, to display the current input. This method handles clicks on buttons with operators. It checks if the current input is not empty and, if an operator is already selected, it performs calculations using the calculate method. Then it stores the selected operator and the current input for future calculations. This method handles the C button click clearing. It resets the current input, operator, result, and updates the text box to display zero. This method handles the equal sign button click, which means performing calculations. If there is current input and an operator is selected, the method calls calculate to perform calculations and resets the selected operator. This event handler is triggered when the percent button is clicked in the calculator's user interface. It sets the current operator to percent to indicate that the following calculation should be a percentage calculation. It then calls the calculate method to perform the calculation. After the calculation is done, it clears the current operator to prepare for the next operation. This event handler is triggered when the square root button is clicked. It sets the current operator to square root to indicate that the following calculation should be a square root operation. It then calls the calculate method to perform the square root calculation. This event handler is triggered when the erase button is clicked. It retrieves the current text from the result text box and stores it in the variable s. It checks if the length of the text is greater than 1, indicating that there is more than one character in the input. If there is more than one character, it removes the last character from s using substring. It then updates the current input with the modified s. If the length of the text is 1 or less, it sets s to 0 and clears current input. Finally, it updates the text in the result text box to reflect the changes made in S. The calculate method is responsible for performing arithmetic calculations based on the current input and operator. Here's a breakdown of the code. Converts the current input, which is stored as a string, to a double value for numeric calculations. The switch statement is used to determine the current operator and perform the corresponding calculation based on the selected operator. If a division by zero is detected, it displays error in the result text box and returns from the method to prevent further calculations. After performing the calculation, the result is converted to a string and updated in the result text box to display the final result to the user. The current input is updated with the result as a string to allow for chaining additional calculations. In summary, the calculate method takes the current input, operator, and performs the specified arithmetic operation while handling division by zero cases. It updates the result display and allows for continued calculations based on the result. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe for more exciting programming tutorials.
Thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you in our future coding adventures. Happy coding!